In this video, I'm gonna show you different ways that you can calculate the length of service in Excel. So depending on how you want the output, whether you wanna look at that in years or years, months, and days, there are some different formulas and functions that you can use to do that. So we'll take a look at those today. We can actually calculate the number of days between two different dates, or say between today's date and a prior date, like a higher date. Then we're going to take a look at a sample employee database and we're going to project who is expected to achieve a service award milestone this year. So we will narrow down that list using our formulas, sorting and filtering, so we can project and plan who will achieve a service award this year. Let's take a look. In Excel, there are a couple different ways that we can calculate years of service based on a higher date. So at the top here, I have three different formulas that will calculate the number of years of service between today's date and a higher date. So we have our higher date up here. And then below that, we have a formula that's gonna return um, the number of years, months, and days based on that higher date, and that's subtracting from today's date or the current date in Excel. And then below that is is a formula that we can use to return the number of complete months between uh, today's date and a higher date. So if I come up here and I change this date, let's say I put another date in there, notice that the formulas will calculate based on today's date and it will subtract that higher date and it will return the number of years. I have these cells formatted as a number out to one decimal. Uh, this is a return value using the if statement, so it returns number of years, months, and days, and then the total number of months. So let's take a look at these the syntax of these formulas in a little bit more detail. Okay, those first two formulas are essentially the same thing. Because Excel stores dates as sequential serial numbers, you can subtract dates in Excel to find the number of days between those two dates. And so when we use the today function, all we have to do is say, today's date and the today function is spelled out today with an open and close parentheses. And then you subtract the higher date or the date that you're trying to subtract from. And then we divide that by 365 days in a year to get the number of years. And we can again format that cell as a number out to however many decimals we want. And then the same function will return if we use days. Days is a function, it's a date and time function in Excel, and it basically returns the number of days between two dates. The syntax is days, open parentheses, and then you put an end date and a start date. So the cell references for, those in, for the end date and the start date, and then you close the parentheses. And when we divide that by 365, we get the total number of years between those two dates. Now, another function that you can use is days 360. And notice that the syntax is a little different than days. So the days, the syntax is end date, comma, start date. With days 360, the syntax is start date, comma, end date. So it's slightly different. Uh, you would want to use days 360 if your organization uses an even 12-month accounting year. What you'll notice if you use this formula, you'll get a very similar result as the first two options. Uh, but if you do round out to multiple decimals, you might see a slight difference. But otherwise, it, it's a good formula for returning uh, the number of days between two dates. All right, now let's take a look at this longer formula. We use a dated if formula to calculate how the number of years, months, and days from today's date and the higher date. So notice up here that we're using um, the today function again, and we wanna first return the full number of complete years between those two dates. Then notice that I have some spacing in between the quotes and the years. This is on purpose so that it would, so that when the formula returns the result, there will be the correct amount of spacing in that cell. Then the next part of the formula is another dated if, and we return the unit YM. The reason that we don't put M for months, if we were to do that and use dated if, it would return the full number of months, completed months between those two dates. And what we want is the number of months after the years have been calculated. Likewise, with the days, we put MD as the unit because we want to return the number of days after it's already calculated the number of years and months. So this formula, I'll go ahead and copy this formula in the description below the video and make sure you use it just right with the, the correct spacing so that it'll, re it'll return the correct value that you'll wanna see.
And here's our formula in Excel. So you can see that there's spacing in between the number two and months. That's why we have those spacing in the formula here um, between those quotes so that it appears correct. Now let's say instead of using today's date that you had another set date that you wanted to use to calculate the difference between two dates. You could go ahead and put a date into another cell in Excel. So I could put 12, 31, 22, so a future date in there if I wanted to. And then all I would have to do instead of using to the today function in one of these formulas, I can simply reference this other cell and subtract the date. Then all I have to do is hit equals open parentheses, this date minus the higher date, close the parentheses, divided by 365, and hit enter. Then I'm going to format these two cells. I'm going to select them, right click, format cells. I'm going to pick number to two decimals and click OK. Now that's a way if you want to reference a date that's in another cell, then you can update that date if needed and the formula will update. Or if you want to actually hard code a date, you can also do that in your formula by typing equals parentheses and then put quotes and we can do year 2022 slash the month December slash 31 close quotes minus the higher date close parentheses divided by 365 and hit enter and we get the same result. So those are two examples instead of using the today function that you can either use a cell reference of another date or you can hard code the date into your formula. Now let's take a look at our employee database and project who is going to achieve a service award this year. Okay, here we have a sample employee database and I'm gonna go ahead and insert some columns here so that we can insert years of service and do some calculations to figure out and project who is going to achieve a certain service award milestone this year. So I'm gonna select this column here, right click and just insert. I'm gonna put four columns in here. And I'm gonna relabel the rows at the top. Okay, now I'm gonna turn these rows a different color so we can see them more easily. Okay, in this column, I am gonna go ahead and put our years of service. So I'm just gonna say equals, open parentheses, and then I'm gonna say the today function, open and close parentheses, minus the higher date, close parentheses, divided by 365 and hit enter. I'm gonna highlight the entire column right click, format cells, and select number, and we'll say to one decimal, and click OK. Then I'm going to select my cell and double click to highlight the formula all the way down. Now I'm going to use the length of service, and we're going to calculate the years, months, and days, just so you can see how that works as well. Now, A2 was a cell reference, but the actual higher date is in E2, so I'm going to go ahead and replace that in the formula. I'll place my cursor at the end and hit Enter. And double click to expand my column, and then I can copy that all the way down. Now, I'll want to leave the formula in here if I want it to calculate on today's date, then I'll leave that formula. I won't copy and paste special values just so I can uh, leave the today formula in there. And every time I open up this worksheet or workbook, it'll calculate the length of service based on the current date. Now, let's take a look at this other tab on our workbook here. Uh, that says awards. And so this is the criteria that we're looking at. We want to determine um, who's going to fall into a category where they're going to achieve a service anniversary milestone this year. And let's say that our organization, as an example, gives awards for three, five, 10, and 15 years of service. So maybe we give a gift at the end of the year and we want to do some budget planning to see who might achieve that award by the end of the year, as long as they're still employed throughout the year and they um, achieve that award. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to look at what our parameters are for the policy or the program. And for this program, um, the cutoff is that anyone who achieves that service milestone during the current year will get an award. So what we can do is say the current year, which is 2022, I'm going to say equals 
2022 minus the number of um, the award year, so the three year um, service anniversary. And I'm gonna copy that down. And so this just means that anyone with a higher year who was hired in the year 2019 will get a three-year service award. Anyone hired in 2017 will get a five-year award and so forth. So what we want to do is actually on our spreadsheet, we're going to extract the year that someone who was hired, and we're going to use that cell to do an if formula. And the syntax of an if formula or if statement in Excel um, shows that if a certain uh, logical test um, is true, it will return a value that we place here. And if it's false, it'll put something else or zero or whatever we put there. So I've created an if statement that we're going to use in our spreadsheet that says if the higher date is is equal to 2019, then return a three for a three year service anniversary. Then we're gonna nest this if statement because we're gonna have several true statements if the higher year is, is a certain date, um, we're gonna return. So our next true statement is if the higher date or higher year is in 2017, we're gonna return a five year, uh, the number five for a five year service anniversary. If the higher date is equal to the year 2012, we're gonna return 10 for a 10 year anniversary. And if the higher date is equal to 2007, we're gonna return 15 for a 15 year service anniversary. And then finally, we have the false part of our if statement to end it up um, if none of those is true, then we want to return the value that just says no award for that year. And then we're going to close off our if statement. So let's go ahead and calculate the higher year and then use our if statement here to calculate who is eligible for a service award. I'm going to come back over to my database and I'm going to use the formula equals year parentheses and select the higher date column close parentheses and hit enter. Then I'm gonna format this as a number. To zero decimals and click okay. So this returns the actual higher year and I'm going to copy that down. I'm gonna copy the whole column and then I'm gonna right click and say paste special and values. So this is going to give me the higher year for everyone. Now I'm going to copy that if statement and place it in here and then we'll be able to see who is eligible for a service anniversary award that they'll achieve this year. I'm going to come over here and copy the if statement and I'm going to paste it here in this cell. And I know that my H2 cell reference is referencing um, this higher year over here, so that looks correct. So I'm gonna place my cursor at the end and hit enter. Now I'm going to copy this down, and then I'm gonna format as a number. And zero decimals, and hit okay. Now we can see that the formula has pulled out to see who gets a three, five, 10, or 15 year service award. And let's say we just wanna filter and narrow down our list. All we have to do is come up to data, filter, select service award, uncheck no award, click okay. And now we can sort. by the service award and click OK. And this will show us who gets a three year, a five year, a 10 year or a 15 year service anniversary award. Check out the description below this video so you can copy and use the formulas that we used in the video today. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and if you found it helpful, you can always give it a thumbs up to like it. You can subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Be sure and visit my website, SharonSmithHR.com. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.